We turn now to top tier Jamaican football on the Sportsmax zone. The rare nephew Jamaica Premier League is inching closer to the playoffs and with just four games remaining in the regular season, much is still left to be decided. Let's get a refresher off the table after 22 games. So we have Mount Pleasant at the top of the table on 49 points, Cavalier in second on 45 points, Tivoli in third after playing 22 matches on 42 points. Now note, Portmore United in fourth position and Annette Gardens in fifth position also have 42 points. In sixth spot, Don Beholden on 34 points, Waterhouse in seventh on 31 Montego Bay United also have 31. Then at the bottom of the table, Treasure Beach and Lime Hall, of course, in relegation zone on 12 and 7 points, respectively. All right, so these are the fixtures to look forward to now. What do we have in store for the weekend? So on Monday, Cavalier will be playing Portmore United. That our fixture will be live on Sportsmax 2. Arnett Gardens will be up against Humble Lion. This is also on Sportsmax 2. On Wednesday, the matches have been moved because of the GFF election. Malines United versus Timothy Gardens on Sportsmax 2. Bay United versus Mount Pleasant on Beholden Play. Montego Bay United, Treasure Beach versus Waterhouse and Lime Hall Academy up against Harbour View. So... Once we're talking JPL, we have our Sportsmax football analyst, Leje Williams. Happy Friday. Welcome to the show. Yeah, man. It's, it's a pleasure all the time, man. It's a pleasure all the time. Yes. Yeah, so, Leje, this, well, I'm thinking weekend, but it's no longer weekend. So, the upcoming fixtures on Monday, right? A lot on the line. I just outlined the table. I just explained to the viewers the importance of these upcoming fixtures. Which of the list that I gave is one that's so, so crucial for that sixth spot? Well, uh, well naturally, you have that Moline's, um, sorry, Montego Bay United versus Dumbo Holding game. Yes. That's shaping up to be a real corker. It's going to be at Dumbo Holding. Um, th that, that fixture, I think, will decide a lot in terms of how much momentum uh, Dumbo Holding could have going into their rest of fixtures because as we outlined a couple of shows ago yes. when we spoke about the fixtures that they have, they have a, a difficult running so if they were able to get over this hump and get the better of Montego Bay United I think that could give them a lot of momentum going into the last three fixtures for the rest of the season and it would leave Montego Bay United with a real mountain to climb so I think he could really sh at least at the very least shorten it to a two horse race instead of a three horse race. Yeah, what's also important is Portmore can leapfrog Cavalier into second position if they win. Talk to us about what to expect for that fixture. Yeah, Cavalier were, were in some really good form, uh, 14 games unbeaten, and then you know they've had a couple of disappointing results, especially the 2-0 loss to Mount Pleasant that they had last game week. And I think that has put them in a little bit of a vulnerable position. We know that the top two in the Jamaica Premier League then qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League playoffs at the very least and that's a very important competition for Jamaican teams not only monetarily but exposure wise for the players if they're looking for some overseas moves so I do think that that's a very important competition to get into and it also the top two will get a buy going into the playoffs also so less games to play which we have seen in the past not necessarily be an advantage but it is going to leave your players to be relatively fresh going into the playoffs as well and if Portman were to beat Cavalier it would leave it would then leave, I think, Cavalier in a really precarious spot because at that point, depending on how bad the loss is especially, we could see the three teams tied on 42 points, which are Tivoli Gardens, Portmore United and Arnett Gardens, all of them being able to leapfrog Cavalier. Yeah. And with three games left, and these are all very good teams. The top five have pulled away from very early in the season. <laughs> They've showed a lot of quality from very early on. So with these three games left, I don't discount at all three of these teams or the, the rest of the top five teams would win out and it would leave Cavalier in a really sticky spot, especially with their goal difference not necessarily being superior to some of those teams around, especially at Tivoli Gardens, the top scorers in the league so far. So it's a really big game for Cavalier, not only for attaining that second spot, but also maintaining their momentum going into the playoffs as well. Yeah, and how much would coach speed be thrown off by their last result? Because they lost, I think, a 14-game unbeaten run but a good team beat them. Mount Pleasant beat them, wasn't it? And yeah. it would have been a, a, a big match for both teams, bragging rights, basically. 
But I, I, I don't think a Cavalier would, would worry too much about, about that result because, um, as I said, they were beaten by a top team and their consistency and steadiness throughout the entire season bodes well for them. Yeah, I agree with you. And Cavalier have proven to be a very good team this season. They've changed their system a bit, necessarily, not necessarily the way that they play, but their system, they're defending just as stoutly as we expect them to. And they have a lot of good defenders, a lot of good midfielders, and of course their young attackers always shining through. So I do think Cavalier, not necessarily that they have something to worry about, but as I mentioned when we were previewing the game last week, there's a psychological aspect to it. This is the same Mount Pleasant team that beat them in the Jamaica Premier League Finals last season. And then when you come into this season, yes, Cavalier won the first game, but going into the playoffs now, so close to the playoffs, if you're going to then lose to Mount Pleasant, which they did, I think that gives a psychological edge to Mount Pleasant to still affirm to Mount Pleasant that, OK, we're still better than this Cavalier team. And if and when we play them in the playoffs again, then we'll have their number. So that's a very important point to note. And also, I think it would have helped Coach Speed to really learn a bit more about his squad because you know that Cavalier have a very young squad so often the chop and change not necessarily in the defence but in the midfield and in the forward line um, we saw Chad James for example a Mount Pleasant low knee that went on to Cavalier and former under 20 player he got his first start of the season I believe in that game so they were without their main strikers especially in Jalmara Calvin who has 10 league goals this season so I'm not going to say it's a this thing to worry for Cavalier, but I still do think that there it was a point of note that Mount Pleasant got the better of them because football is a mental game, life is a mental game. So if you're going to lose to your opponents, it's going to create a, a little bit of psychological edge for them. Yeah, you looked at the Don Behold and Montego Bay clash, which for the playoff race is obviously the biggest match of the next round, but. They sandwich Waterhouse because Waterhouse are seventh, Montego Bay are eighth, and Dumbo Holden are sixth. Um, the closeness between those two teams interesting to the running, but Waterhouse have a significantly better goal difference than both of those teams. So if it is that Waterhouse can get some good results here and uh, match Dumbo Holden for points, their plus nine goal difference at the moment could work well for them. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, that's an advantage that I always thought they had. They haven't been scoring too many goals, but they haven't been conceding any either, especially as of late, um, Waterhouse. So they're a quality enough team, I think. I think all three teams would be deserving if they get into the top six. But I still think that there are some issues when it comes down to Waterhouse, especially attacking-wise. They're not quite as fluid as we expect a Marcel Fuzigale coach team to be, a Waterhouse to be who play... <laughs> No pun intended as it's Waterhouse, liquid football. They play some really good football at Waterhouse and they haven't really been doing that this season. It's been really a slug at times for them to get some goals and get some really good attack play going. So it's good that they have this goal difference built up and it's going to be very pivotal. Let's hope that they, they aren't penned back or if they lose a game, then it could be a bit dicey or if Dumbo Holding or Montego Bay United start scoring and keeping more clean sheets, that could also cause a problem with the goal difference because that can change so quickly. But... As of right now, that could be, that's their advantage. Despite being three points behind, that's their advantage that they're carrying into the playoff race. Yes, yeah, so Waterhouse at the moment have 31 points. Like Montego Bay United, they are three points off Dunbo Holden. Um, given the quality and the form, because we have to consider the current form, because that's what we have to work with to the back end of the, of the season. Do you think Dunbo Holden are strong enough to fend off those two, um, stalking them for the playoff spot? I do think that they're strong enough, but they have to sort out their consistency. Because you mentioned their form. So often we see Dumbo holding, they have the ability to blow away any team in the league. They're coached by Lenworth Teacher Hyde, and they have been playing some good football at times. But so often we see defensive lapses. So often we see um, bouts of indiscipline as well. So it's, it's, it's not hasn't been too consistent for Dumbo holding. It hasn't been too consistent for any of the three teams. Um, fighting for that playoff space spot. And then when I say just inconsistency, this goal, for example, there, the first goal they consider, the goal they consider against Tivoli Gardens, I think is a key example. Just, yes, the pitch could be blamed for a goal like this, but in terms of, this is just a comical error that you shouldn't really be conceding. You shouldn't be conceding a goal like that in a game like this against his Tivoli team who didn't really create much for the rest of the game and Dumbo Holding ended up equalising to make it one also. Obviously, game state plays a lot into it, but this could have been a game where Dumbolding could have been one of the big boys and really asserted themselves yeah. in that top six race. So, inconsistency from all three teams. And I think 
it's going to be the team, as I said, I think it's going to come down mostly to what happens when they play each other. And then now Dumbo holding, hosting Montego Bay United. That's a huge game all the way on Wednesday. Yeah, credit to the Dumbo holding goalkeeper there, yeah. though, because all, that moment could have shattered him. But he made some brilliant saves in the match overall, so he rebounded from that well. Yeah, and, and you were speaking about him last week, Sir Lance, about, <laughs> about how He had lost weight and yeah. he, looked, he looked fitter. I said that last week, yes. Well, well, maybe that fitness helped him when he was making those sales. But he's always been a quality keeper, Damian. I, obviously, yeah. just along with his team, maybe consistency an issue. But he's one that has been around national squads before. So he's a quality keeper. And yeah, I, I figured that he would have rebounded well from that. It was just an innocuous error, to be, to be honest. But, you know, those are things that happen. Sometimes it, when those unlucky things happen... And lucky things like that don't usually happen to teams that are fully focused and rearing to go. You know, there's someone even said, you know, obviously this won't happen in Jamaica often because of the quality of our fields, like we saw in that clip there. But on the really good slick surfaces, sometimes when you see players slipping all the time, I don't think you've ever noticed uh, Cristiano Ronaldo slipping at a pivotal moment, Lionel Messi slipping at a pivotal moment. Really top, top players, those Bambi and Ice moments don't necessarily happen to them. So... Yeah, I think it's just keeping focus for all of the teams, for all of the players involved as well. Because as I said, all three teams are definitely deserving of getting that six spot. It's just who is going to fight enough and play good enough football to get there. What about that Steven Gerrard slip, though, that cost Liverpool their title race? Well, you know, there are anomalies for everything. And, <laughs> and I, I LJ Williams, despite being an Arsenal supporter, I will never come on any platform and disrespect Stephen George Gerrard, the best English midfielder ever. And there was a John Terry slip with the penalty kick as well. And that, that's just his karma for his off-the-field issues. Oh, it know? was? Oh yeah. What, what off-the-field issues? This is like, we're talking about the Jamaica <laughs> Premier League sailor. So I, I, can't, I can't get into that right now, unfortunately. So, the title, has it been decided? In, um, in, in terms of the Jamaica Premier League, I, it's nothing is decided yet because of the playoffs and how it's set up. Mount Pleasant, as I've said multiple times, I think not necessarily that they play the best football in the league, but they are the best team in the league. They have the best squad in the league. They were able to loan out almost 10 players in January and they've still looked extremely consistent. Even when they lost players to national duty, they still had players coming in and doing the job. They have a set system and they've been just performing extremely well. So I do think that overall Mount Pleasant are still the favourites to, you know, really go on and retain the title. But as we've seen on several occasions, I do think that teams can jump up. I, I've been fans of Tivoli from early on in the season. I saw their process and how they have improved as well. Mm. And, you know, you can never count out maybe if one of the, whichever the three teams come in and finish sixth, we can never yeah. know if they can come up because we've seen it before with Arnett. We've seen it before with Harbour View, so it's not always set in stone. But if I were to be a betting man as I usually am, it would my money would definitely go to Mount Pleasant at this current moment. Mm. Yeah, well, the JPL action, of course, continues to be very, very hot, and it will be live on your home of champions, so you don't want to miss. Leger, thank you so much. We'll talk again next week. Yeah, man, all the time, and I'm always here. All right, same time, same place. It's break time. <laughs>